Hello there, fellow Battletech officer aficionados, and welcome back to some more detailed military lore on this wonderful setting. Today, for a change, we're not gonna tackle one of the major inner sphere power militaries, but instead a famous state out of the periphery. Because, fortunately, there's actually quite a lot of lore on the militaries of these states as well. Or, at the very least, the two major ones. I'm gonna let you guess which the second one is, because today, the first of these periphery powers, from a military standpoint, is the Torian Concordat. So, without further ado, let us learn about them, shall we? The Torian Concordat military is known as the Torian Defense Force, or for short, TDF. The TDF has traditionally been known as the largest, best trained, best motivated, and best equipped military from the periphery. However, the TDF still pales in comparison to the successor states' militaries, especially with that of the neighboring Federated Sons. Indeed, the history of aggression, both real and imagined, by House Davion, has put the Concordat on a state of high alert, some would say a state of paranoia even, for much of its existence. Lest the forced annexation of the Concordat, which began in the Reunification War, were to actually be completed. The actions of the TDF are ultimately controlled by the Protector of the Realm, who serves as the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces and has the rank of Senior Marshal. If the Protector lacks in military experience or competence, the Protector may delegate another individual to serve as Senior Marshal. In times of war, the Protector can invoke emergency powers, which grant them greater authority to prosecute the war effort. In the years leading up to and during the Reunification War, the Protector could appoint a Marshal to serve as the TDF Chief of Staff, who oversaw the day-to-day -day operations and managed their strategic planning committee. There were also three Deputy Marshals who were in overall command of the Concordat Army, the Concordat Navy and the Planetary Defense Forces respectively. The work of carrying out the Concordat's military policies fell to the Ministry of Defense, which serves as an advisory board to the Protector and provides civilian control over the Torian Defense Force. Staffed with both civilians and military specialists, the department oversees everything from recruitment to weapon research and development to material acquisition. Up through the years of the succession wars, the Ministry of Defense's main mission was to maintain a constant vigil in the event of an invasion by an outside power. After the Concordat's entry into the Trinity Alliance, however, their focus shifted towards using Capellan assistance to revamp their armed forces, in exchange for fighting the wars of Liao, also prosecuting the defensive invasion of the Pleiades Cluster. Moving on, let us take a look at the ranking system. Beginning with the enlisted personnel at the lowest rank, we have the Recruit, with the sole role of Infantry Trooper, the Corporal, with the roles of Infantry Maniple Commander, Tank Commander or Junior Specialist, the Section Leader, with the roles of Infantry Squad Commander, Tank Maniple Commander or Senior Specialist, the Force Sergeant, with the roles of Platoon Commander, Tank Lance Commander or Aerospace Pilot, the Lance Sergeant, with the roles of Assistant Company Commander, Mech Warrior in Training, or Air Lance Commander. The Battalion Chief Sergeant, with the roles of Senior Battalion NCO, or Mech Warrior. And the Air Chief, with the role of Flight Commander. For the Officer Section, we have The Cornet and the Ensign. The Cornet has the role of Company CO, Mech Warrior, or Mech Lance CO and the Ensign has the role of Wing CO or Ship Assistant Department Head. Then we have the Subaltern and the Air Master Junior Grade. The Subaltern can be a Battalion Commanding Officer or a Mech Company Commanding Officer, and the Air Master an Air Division XO or a Ship Department Head. Then we have the Brigadier or the Air Master Senior Grade. The Brigadier can be a Regiment XO or a Mech Battalion CO, and the Air Master an Air Division CO. Then we have the Colonel and the Space Master. These are Regimental Commanding Officers or Ship Captains respectively. Last but not least, we have the Comptroller and the Commodore. 
The first one can be a multi-world force commander or a mech combined arms commanding officer, and a commodore a demi-squadron commander. Finally, we have the rank of marshal, who is the equivalent of a corps commander. The Torian Defense Force is divided into the following combat and support branches. The Concordat Army. This consists of line battle mech, armor and infantry regiments, including mercenary units on long-term contracts. When required, the army is supplemented by the Concordat Constabulary, as well as other irregular forces. The Concordat Navy consists of the TDF's dropships and jumpships, and when available, warships, when assigned to a corps. The assets are divided into fleets, and each fleet divided into two demi-squadrons. Naval personnel are typically long-term volunteers, with officers serving between four to seven years on average. In case of an invasion, the Navy is the first line of defense. The Aerospace Arm this is composed of the TDF Aerospace Fighter Force and maintains a large number of long-time volunteers too. Despite the low turnover, they have been considered the weakest of the free combat branches, due to a lack of good equipment and trained personnel. During the 31st century, the TDF sought the Outworld's Alliance advisors to help modernize the aerospace arm, resulting in a gradual increase in competence and equipment. The Medical Division provides medical attention to soldiers wounded in the field, with an emphasis on quick recovery and rehabilitation, and the deployment of emergency medical technicians and surgical units at a moment's notice. In 3025, the care the Medical Division provided was on par with any Inner Sphere counterpart. Thanks to the Magistracy of Canopus providing aid via the Trinity Alliance, in 3067 the average Torian soldier was receiving better care even than the Inner Sphere. The Transport and Service Division They are responsible for transportation and the recovery and repairs of material in a battle area. All military dropships and jumpships are under the control of the Transport and Service Division, unless otherwise deployed with another division or corps. The Administrative Corps These are responsible for all administrative matters, including payment, record-keeping, promotion and mercenary contracts. Finally, the Propaganda Division is charged with disseminating information to maintain high morale in the TDF, and counteracting negative rumors spread by instigators. The arrangement of the Torian Defense Force is reminiscent of the Napoleonic armies with a 31st century twist. Battle mech regiments are organized into operational corps, each under the command of a marshal, with naval elements directly attached and answering to the corps commanders. Each corps also includes a command company with a mix of mechs and armor, the latter used for scouting purposes. It is the corps which provides the TDF with offensive capability, and they serve as the last line of defense in the event of an invasion of the Concordat. The units which are not part of a corps, typically conventional regiments, are permanently assigned to garrison specific planets. Each world has at least one battalion of armor and more important ones are protected by one or more regiments, many boasting extensive fortifications as well. Supporting the regular line units are a variety of support formations and special forces. During the Reunification War, the Torian Volunteer Guards played a great role in defending the Concordat, although they were wiped out in the conflict. The Special Asteroid Support Force is an elite all-volunteer group, dedicated to defending the Hyades Cluster from invaders. The Concordat Constabulary, an internal security force during peacetime, can also be called on to fight an invasion. Lastly, there's a variety of paramilitary groups, including planetary militias, corporate security and noble family regiments, all of which can be mobilized in an emergency. In the five years between the formation of the Star League and the start of the Reunification War, all the way in 2575, the TDF of the day would double in size, making it the greatest military in the periphery, and equal to some of the great houses even. The Concordat Navy was bigger than any other, bar the Terran hegemony, with 127 warships, thousands of jumpships and dropships, and many squadrons of aerospace fighters. The Concordat Army consisted of 33 battle mech regiments, organized into six corps, with nearly three times as many frontline armored regiments, 
seven aerospace fighter regiments, and many, many infantry regiments. The Torian nobility themselves were able to finance the creation of over two dozen more regiments during the war as well. Unfortunately, by the end of that war, the TDF was a shadow of its former self, with only 13 mech regiments and 9 surviving warships. By 2750, the TDF was in a similar state, its eyes limited and monitored by the Star League, with a strength of, again, 13 regiments and 15 warships. When the Concordat joined with Stefan Amaris and the other periphery armies to throw off the League's oppression, they were able to expand their forces massively in secret. Until by 2765, they were equipped with 21 divisions, consisting of 78 regiments and 115 mech regiments, and 31 warships. While consisting of troops provided by and flagged as part of the TDF, many of these were essentially independent, operating as the secret army of Amaris. Most of these would be destroyed in the new Vanderburg Uprising, and with the succession wars cutting off any further support from the inner sphere, many of the survivors withered away. By 3025, the TDF had 12 mech regiments, three of them mercenaries on long-term contract, organized into six corps. The Navy had 117 jumpships and dropships, divided into four fleets. By 3050, their army had increased to 14 mech regiments, three of which were mercenary commands. By 3064, they had a mech strength of 17 regiments. Unfortunately for them, again, this number was reduced to 9 mech regiments in 3067, due to the losses from the Pleiades campaign and the formation of the Calderon Protectorate. One of the defining characteristics of the Torian Defense Force is their fierce pride, and a fanatical devotion to defending the Concordat against any aggressor, by any means necessary. Having never actually signed the Ares Conventions, no quarter will be asked or expected by the TDF, and no dirty trick is above use in the defense of the homeland. This includes the deliberate targeting of enemy jumpships operating as part of the invasion force. Strategically, during the Succession Wars era, the Concordat couldn't afford to conduct a defensive campaign similar to that used in the Reunification War where it concentrated around important planets and was able to trade space for time. With its shrunken size after the Reunification War, nearly all the border worlds of the Concordat are vital to their survival, requiring the static deployment of its military forces as far forward as possible, and leaving little strategic reserves. In the event of another Great Inner Sphere invasion, the TDF Navy would deploy to engage the enemy as far as possible, and sacrifice themselves if necessary to blunt any advance in the Hyades Cluster. Ground forces not part of a permanent garrison would operate as special task forces to conduct a variety of missions, launching local counterattacks or raiding deep behind enemy lines to disrupt lines of communication. Tactically, the TDF was unable to practice true combined arms warfare in the modern sense during the Succession Wars era as the few mech and aerospace fighter assets it possessed were thinly spread and deployed on a rotating basis. Conventional forces were able to work seamlessly together, giving the TDF a great advantage, but any cooperation between them and any mech or ASF assets locally available was often of an ad hoc nature. At the same time, many mech regiments did have conventional forces permanently attached, providing them with much required support. The TDF operates on a variation of the standard Inner Sphere model. Mech regiments are slightly bigger than usual and will include a command lance. Conventional units not attached to a core were permanently assigned to garrison a planet. Armor regiments do not use a separate command unit, instead the regimental commander operates among the line units so as to improve their own survivability. Since infantry regiments rarely rotate off-world, many of their individual battalions train in a specialization, although anti-mech is a given for all battalion level units or higher. Additionally, each infantry regiment will also include a dedicated platoon of commandos trained in demolition, infiltration, and other special warfare techniques. For the final part of the episode, let us take a look at their training and academies. All citizens of the Torian Concordat are required to serve at least four years in the TDF, two of those on active duty. 
but that all service must be of a military nature. Those who don't intend to pursue a military career are assigned to a provisional training battalion, with one battalion for each of the planet's geographical districts or cantons. The conscripts will receive some rudimentary combat training, but otherwise they will be asked to perform civilian-oriented jobs. Those who wish to join the military proper will receive an 18-week basic training course before moving on to a field unit. Alone of the major periphery powers, the Concordat has maintained large military academies for most of its history. Every Torian planet can boast at least one military academy, although most are dedicated to training conventional forces and their support units. For more advanced training, the Concordat maintains three of each for its main branches, the Army, the Navy, and the Aerospace Arm. Each can handle about 500 or more cadets at a time, mostly Torian nationals, but around 10% will be foreign students as well. Education is free for citizens of the Concordat, but admission can still depend on passing the physical and the mental standards. A suitable endowment can improve an applicant's chances, and such legal bribery is seen as required to maintain the school's effectiveness. The curriculum is similar at all three schools. Emphasis is placed on basic training, giving students a strong aptitude for military history and allowing some electives, after which students are allowed to specialize in any offered field based on their results. Exceptional students may be offered additional special training or officer candidate school, although mech warriors are guaranteed a commission anyway. Usually the Torian schools are less stressful than their Capellan counterparts, of which some were open to qualified Torian candidates after the Trinity Alliance was formed. The primary reason was found to be that greater personal investment was required in order to succeed, compared to a Torian school, with the trade-off being that there was a far greater burnout rate. Still, once the option became available, many of them jumped at the opportunity, since foreign education was seen as providing an edge to getting a promotion. And this, my fellow vigorous, bullheaded defenders, has been what I wanted to tell you about the mighty Torian Defense Force for today. Definitely one of the strongest and most relentless militaries of the Battletech setting, outside of the Inner Sphere powers and the clans, of course. Personally, I really like the Torians, even though they sometimes appear to be the rednecks of the Battletech setting. What I do find funniest about them is their paranoia concerning the Federated Sons. But hey, it's not really paranoia if they're really out to get you. As always, I welcome your thoughts on these fellows in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, do consider supporting the series by watching, liking, sharing, subscribing, and clicking the bell icon to stay updated. Thanks a lot, and have a healthy and awesome day. GDN signing out.